Hello, good day everyone. In our previous lesson, we have seen the relationship between quadratic roots and quadratic coefficients. So in today's tutorial, we are going to look onto uh, the symmetrical functions of quadratic roots. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Press the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever I upload any content. The symmetrical function are this, and there are many more symmetrical functions. And why do we call them symmetrical functions? They are symmetrical functions in the sense that, for instance here that we have alpha squared plus beta squared, interchanging them will not change the value. So first we see beta squared plus alpha squared, they remain the same. So interchanging all these values will not change their main value. So how do we solve this type of functions? This is the question given to us. So first alpha and beta, so wherever you see alpha and beta here, they are referring to the quadratic roots of this main quadratic equation. Hence we are asked to find the values of these functions. So before you start solving any function in this form, you need to find the sum and the products of this quadratic function, which are alpha plus beta and alpha times beta. And in our previous lesson, we were able to derive the two formulas used to find the sum and the products of this root. And we say for sum of roots, it is the same thing as saying minus b over a. And for the product, we say it is the same thing as saying c over a, where a, b, c are all coefficients of the quadratic equation. So for this main quadratic equation, the a there, which is the leading coefficient, is the coefficient of x squared, which is 2. And for b, it is the coefficient of the middle term, which is 7. And lastly, c is the constant, which we have here as 5. So we are going to substitute into these two equations in order to obtain the sum and the product of roots. So from the first one, we have negative b, meaning negative 7, over a, and our a is 2. And for this, we have c over a, which is constant 5, over a, which is also 2. So the sum of this root is negative 7 over 2, while the product is 5 over 2. It is the same thing as solving down this quadratic equation, obtaining the two real solution. If you add them together, you are going to obtain negative 7 over 2. As well, if you multiply them together, you are going to obtain 5 over 2. So now let us keep this one aside. We have alpha plus beta to be equal to negative 7 over 2. And we have alpha times beta to be equal to 5 over 2. Hence, we are going to be using them throughout. So now let us start with the first one. A part, we are asked to find what is 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. We do not have anything in this form. All we have is sum and the product. Therefore, we are going to convert this two little fraction into a single fraction. By taking the LCM, I have alpha times beta. If you plug in alpha here, you're going to obtain beta. Beta times one is beta plus. If you plug in beta here, you're going to obtain alpha. Then alpha times one is alpha. But beta plus alpha is the same thing as saying alpha plus beta, which is one of the symmetrical property of roots. But alpha plus beta is given as negative 7 over 2. So we say negative 7 over 2 divided by alpha times beta is 5 over 2. So we have 5 over 2. This is equal to negative 7 over 5 because they have common denominators so we can divide the numerators together. Hence we say this is 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta equals negative 7 over 5. Now let us move to the next one. The B part we are asked to find alpha squared plus beta squared. But mark you, alpha squared plus beta squared is never equal to alpha plus beta squared. They are entirely different. So how can we figure out the real values of this alpha squared plus beta squared? 
we know that if we expand this, we are going to obtain uh, terms that correspond to alpha squared plus beta squared. Hence, let us expand this and see the result. Uh, if you say alpha plus beta all squared, it is the same thing as first term squared, alpha squared, plus second term squared, which is beta squared, plus two multiplied by alpha multiplied by beta. By expanding this, we are able to obtain two terms that correspond to what we are looking for. Hence, we can make this the subject of this equation. Alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to this minus this. Alpha plus beta all squared, the minus 2 alpha beta. Hence, we can substitute this with the right hand side. So we can write this as alpha plus beta all squared minus 2 alpha beta. Now we can substitute for sum and the product, which are this. Alpha plus beta is negative 7 over 2, but this one contains a square. Therefore, we have to square this minus 2 times alpha times beta is 5 over 2. This is equal to negative 7 squared is 49. Divide by 2 squared is 4. Minus 2 times 5 is 10. Divide by 2. It is more simpler to simplify fractions if they have common denominator. Hence, to transform this into 4, we are going to multiply it by 2. And we have to equally multiply the top by 2 for equivalency. This is 20. Subtract from 49 to make it 29. Divide by the common denominator, which is 4. And we say this is alpha squared plus beta squared equals 29 over 4. Now let us move on to the next one. The C part says 1 over alpha squared plus 1 over beta squared. We do not have anything in this form, therefore we have to transform them in such a way they will contain one of these or all of them. Hence, let us combine the fractions together. The LCM is going to be alpha squared, beta squared, but law of indices says we can give them a single power. So we see alpha, beta squared. Remember, addition is commutative, so we can start with either this or this. So let's start with beta squared. Plugging in beta squared here, you're going to obtain alpha squared times one is alpha squared plus Plug in alpha squared here, you're going to obtain beta squared times 1 is beta squared. And this is equal to, but you can see here, alpha squared plus beta squared is already given as 29 over 4. So we see 29 over 4 divided by alpha times beta is 5 over 2. 5 over 2 all squared. This is equal to 29 over 4, divide by 5 squared is 25, over 2 squared is 4. They have common denominator, so we can divide the numerators together. Hence, we are going to obtain 29 divided by 25. And we can write it here as 29 divided by uh, 25, which is the solution for 1 over alpha squared plus 1 over beta squared. Now let us look on to the last one, which is uh, alpha minus beta all squared. The D part, we are asked to find alpha minus beta all squared. Again, we do not have anything in this form. All we have is sum and the product. Therefore, let us expand this. By expansion, we are going to obtain first time squared, alpha squared plus Second term squared, beta squared, the minus two multiplied by alpha beta, alpha beta. And this is equal to, we have already seen that alpha squared plus beta squared is uh, 29 over four. So we say 29 over 
4. The minus 2 times the product of root, which is 5, over 2. This is equal to 29 over 4 minus 10 over 2. We can multiply this by 2 to make it 4. And we have to do the same to the top. 10 times 2 is 20. Then subtract from 29, we have 9. Divide by the common denominator, which is 4. Hence, this is alpha minus beta all squared. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching, and do have a nice day.